Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of Hebrews. We just began our study in Hebrews yesterday with a brief introduction to this wonderful New Testament book. Uh, let's read the first couple of verses again to, to refresh our memory. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. Now, we noticed yesterday that the primary emphasis of the book of Hebrews is on the Son, on Jesus, the Son of God. But we also noticed that the book is a little unique among New Testament letters in that it does not identify the author of the book. Most of the letters, as we said yesterday, begin telling us who is writing the letter. Not Hebrews. He just jumps into material. So in that sense, the, the letter of Hebrews is anonymous. We are, we are not certain who the author of the book is. Now, obviously, throughout the years, there's been quite a bit of speculation. And I thought I would give you the various names that have been listed as possible authors of the book of Hebrews. Now, there are some who think that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. Now, he is the author, of course, of most of the letters in the New Testament. We are quite familiar with all of Paul's writings. And so some have speculated that Hebrews was also written by the Apostle Paul. The only problem with that theory is that in all of his other letters, if this had been written by Paul, in all of the other letters, he identifies himself quite clearly. So why in one letter would he not identify himself? Also, the, the content of Hebrew, the way the book is written, the style of writing is, is different, and it's a different style of Greek in the original languages than we find in the others of Paul's letters. So even though Paul has been suggested as a possible author, I, I think that is probably unlikely. But there, there are some, though, who feel that Paul perhaps was the author. Now, there are some who feel that perhaps Barnabas was the author. Now, you remember Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas was the associate of Paul on the very first missionary journey, and Barnabas was a leader in the early church. And there have always been some who speculated, well, perhaps Barnabas wrote this letter. We don't know. That, that is a possibility, I suppose, but, but I listed to you as, as one of the names that has been listed. Another possibility that has been suggested is that it was written by Apollos. Now, you remember in, in the book of Acts, we are introduced to a man named Apollos. is after Paul's second missionary journey, and Paul has left Priscilla and Aquila, two of his associates, in the city of Ephesus. Paul's going to go there on the third journey. But before Paul returns, it tells us Apollos came and visited the city of Ephesus. It tells us that Apollo was a very learned, well-educated man. He was a Jew. He was from the city of Alexandria, and he very powerfully preached the scripture and preached about Jesus. Priscilla and Aquila spent some time helping him and talking with him. But we, we know from that brief introduction, he's mentioned a couple of other times in the New Testament, he was a powerful preacher and he was educated, learned in the scripture. Some think maybe Apollos wrote the book of Hebrews. Since he was a Jewish believer, he would have had a special interest in how Jesus, the Son, fulfills all that is in the Old Testament, how it reaches its utter fulfillment in Jesus. That, of course, is part of the, the book of Hebrews. Also, the, the Greek in Hebrews is, is very sophisticated. It is, it is obviously written by a well-educated man. So maybe Apollos was the writer. He has been suggested. We just don't know. One other possibility has been suggested, and that it perhaps it was written by Priscilla. Now, remember Paul, on his second missionary journey when he was in Corinth, met Priscilla and Aquila. They were fellow believers who had recently come from Rome, and they became associated with Paul from then on in his missionary endeavors. It's interesting that oftentimes when Priscilla and Aquila are mentioned, Priscilla is mentioned first, which is interesting because, of course, she is the woman, she is the wife. And I say it's interesting because that would not be the cultural expectation. Normally, the man would be mentioned first. Obviously, Priscilla was a great believer and a great teacher of the faith. We, we see that clearly in the time she's talked about. Some have suggested that maybe Priscilla wrote the book of Hebrews. And she simply did not list her name because uh, in that time, it was not common uh, for women to write letters of authority. 
So those are the possibilities that have been mentioned. Maybe Paul. Maybe he was the author. Maybe it was Barnabas. Maybe it was Apollos. Maybe it was Priscilla. Those are the main names mentioned as possibilities in, in most of the thinking about Hebrews. The fact of the matter is we just don't know for sure. But what we do know is that the message of Hebrews is a powerful word about who Jesus is. The emphasis throughout Hebrews is on Jesus as the Son of God and Jesus as our great high priest. We're going to see that all through the book of Hebrews. So whoever wrote it, whether it was Paul or whether it was Barnabas or whether it was Apollos or whether it was Priscilla, whoever wrote it, wrote it with the authority of Holy Scripture to teach us about Jesus, the Son of God, our great high priest. Join us tomorrow for our next session in the five-minute Bible study of the book of Hebrews.